to kick off the discussion, I'm going to start with our host, Dr. Akinwumi Adezina. Uh, Mr. President, I would like first to start by congratulating you by do, uh, doing something that is unprecedented, having all of those head of state and government from Africa and beyond Africa coming here to talk about this unique and important issues, which is how Africa can feed itself. Um, this is the second edition of uh, this summit. So Dakar won, usher in the Feed Africa program, one of the African Development Bank's high five program, which aim at delivering uh, $2.4 billion uh, per year between the years 2016 and 2025. African agriculture is probably the sector most hit by the three C's of climate, COVID-19, and conflict. What has worked? if I may ask, what has worked well, what has not worked at all, so, and why uh, in, in your Feed Africa strategy? And if you can also tell us why, please. Yeah, okay. No, well, thank you very much uh, for that. You know, I I'm sure when you all got invitation to come to this meeting, you're probably wondering, you know, what is, why are they calling you DACA 2? Why, why, what was DACA 1? It was right here that we had DACA 1, I had just been elected president of the African Development Bank, and I decided at the time that the priorities had to be all around five things. You know, light up and power Africa, feed Africa, industrialize Africa, integrate Africa, and improve the quality of life of the people of Africa. Pretty simple stuff. Um, you know, and uh, I always like to tell my staff at the bank that my way of making decisions is not a very complicated one, which special econometric uh, 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 modeling of stuff. I just simply take out my pen, I write the things I don't like, <laughs> and I do the opposite. And how do I explain that, you know, 65% of the arable land uncultivated in the world is in Africa, and we can't feed ourselves, and that is not acceptable. And that's why we had a Feed Africa strategy. And I asked uh, His Excellency President Makisal, who helped us to host the meeting here, right here, and that's how we developed the Feed Africa strategy of the bank. And I want to thank the CGIR um, because they played a big role um, in, in, in helping to do that. Now, since that time, we've, been, you know, we've provided about more than $7 billion uh, in support of, of, of agriculture in, in, in different ways. And so back to your question in time, so what have we done and what has worked and what hasn't worked as well and what needs to be done? Let me start with some of the things that I think we have done that I'm very, very excited about. First is the issue of technologies. Today we have the technologies to feed Africa. For me, it's not an issue. The technologies to feed Africa, they're there. They are on the shelf, though. We need to get them off the shelf right into the hands of farmers at scale. And that's why the African Development Bank uh, launched this program called the uh, technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, um, which is to essentially take technologies to the scale of millions of farmers. You've heard about the wheat technology with Ethiopia. You had the Minister of Planning of Ethiopia talk about that yesterday, uh, where they went from 5,000 hectares in 2018-19 to 800,000 um, uh, hectares uh, today, which is, which is incredible. But these are heat-tolerant varieties. And the point is that the R&D system is able to develop the technologies that will allow Africa to adapt to climate change and also be productive, efficient, and to be competitive. We have, from the CGIR, the water-efficient maize for Africa, which we used through the TART program when there was drought in, um, in um, I think it was in southern Africa, in Malawi, uh, in Zambia, and also in Zimbabwe. You are able to deploy this water-efficient maize varieties, that maize varieties that are able to perform well in the face of water stress. And that reached roughly about 5.6 million uh, uh, households. You know? And so the technologies are there. We also have for rice that is also reaching 3.2 million households. So what is working is that the technologies are working. And second, we have the platforms to deploy them, which is the Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, TAT, which is able to deliver the technologies at scale. The other thing that we are doing that we are very excited about is the fact that, 
you know, we've heard a lot about we need to process and add value to, to what we produce. And so the bank is investing heavily in what we call special agro-industrial processing zones. These are new economic zones that we are creating in rural areas that are enabled with infrastructure, power, water, roads, logistics, to create new zones in which the food and ag agricultural businesses can locate to. You see, in Africa today, if you look across almost any city you have, the companies bringing in the food, they are located in the urban areas. But where are the farms in the urban areas? There are no farms there. They are all in the rural areas. And the reason they are not in the rural areas is because there's lack of infrastructure there. So this special agro-industrial processing zone, we create the density of infrastructure in these rural economies where the farmers are and the food and ag businesses are located there. And therefore, they can produce food. Somebody's going to buy it. They can process it. They don't move raw materials again out of rural areas. They, make, they move finished products. And a good example is, you're right there. I think you may want to mention that. I think if you look at the case in Benin, where they have one of these zones in Benin. In Benin, they export a lot of cotton. But because of the special agro-industrial processing zone that they now have there, they will no longer export a single fiber of cotton from this year. Same also for cashew. They will also do that. Ethiopia has several of these special agro-industrial processing zones that we are doing. So we do know that reconfiguring the agricultural sector with special agro-industrial processing zones is working. The third thing that we see that is also we're doing that's working is that getting the young people into agriculture. I told you I love to wear my bow ties as Minister of Agriculture because I think the coolest and sexiest thing you have is agriculture, right? But you can clap if you want. If you <laughs> Look, but we have to talk about how people in agriculture are called, okay? And I was asking the young people how to do that. And somebody said, oh, I went to um, my in-laws. I want to marry somebody. And when I got over there, um, they asked, what does the guy who wants to marry you, what does he do? And he said, he's a farmer. And the parents said, no. And when the guy showed up, they said, I, we understand you are a farmer. Uh, he said, no, I am not a farmer. I am an agripreneur. So we have to actually make things very cool so that people understand that agriculture is, is uh, 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 it's not a, a way of life. The other thing that we've done is that agriculture, as you know, has shocks. You have lack of rain, you have pests and diseases, and you have all manner of geopolitical shocks like we just had with the Russian war in Ukraine and all of that. The African Development Bank um, launched a, um, a $1.5 billion um, uh, Africa Emergency Risk, uh, I mean, the food production facility, which allow us to support um, 30, uh, 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 20 million farmers uh, that are going to be producing uh, roughly 38 million metric tons of food and valued at $12 billion. So that is working. And I want to use the opportunity to thank several of the partners that are here that are co-financing that with us. Uh, the government of JICA provided about $310 uh, million in support of that. They got support from the U.S. government, from Norway, uh, from Netherlands, uh, from the U.K., and several others in that. So, but now the issue is, how do we move from emergency to structural things? And that's why we have Dakar too, uh, to really say, how do we now really work to make sure we can fully, fully feed ourselves? One last thing I'll say about what is not working as well. What is not working as well is the fact that we still have very little, um, limited amount of financing coming from the um, private sector into agriculture. And to be able to do that, we must therefore develop ways in which we de-risk lending by the commercial banks into the agriculture sector. Today, less than two, three percent of commercial bank lending goes into agriculture, right? But agriculture is not as risky as people think. And I ran programs in Nigeria as Minister of Agriculture 
wherein we created a $350 million risk guarantee facility to de-risk the agriculture sector. We leveraged $3.5 billion, four years. Where is GDA? Yeah, can you get up and let me let people see that I'm actually giving a true testimony? Yeah. Uh, he, he, was, he was one of those uh, risk-averse bankers in Nigeria in those days. He was a senior banker in Nigeria, and um, they started lending to agriculture. And what was the loss rate? Or well, I can hear you. Yeah, they let, you know, let, it said less than 2%. Non-performing loans, less than 2%. Here is the lesson. Yeah. If you know what you're doing, agriculture is not as risky. Two, we must have the establishment of risk-sharing facilities to de-risk agricultural lending. And then we must make sure that the lending we do is not just for farmers. You need to support small and medium-sized enterprises. You have to support agribusinesses, the whole, the whole value chain. At the end of the day, it's the partnership that now matters for scale. And that's why we are here for Dakar too. And that's, we just had a meeting just now with the partners and uh, development partners uh, all across. And we agree that we're going to work together. You know, and I really believe in partnership so much. As a kid, my mother taught me how to sweep. And I remember the day she taught me that lesson. She asked me to go and get a broom. I did. And she took the individual pieces of the broom apart. And she gave me a strand of it. She said, sweep. Uh, sweep. And of course, what can you do with one strand? It didn't work. And then she took it all together and she put a rope around it. And she gave it to me. She said, sweep. And I swept because it worked. As a kid, I realized that if you ever want to get anything done, yeah. you need partnership. And as president of the African Development Bank, I don't care about flags. People don't eat flags. People eat food. So therefore, no. it's how we connect. It's how we work together. It's how we make sure that collectively we deliver things that are bigger than what we can do individually. So that's what we are changing here, that we are going to work not as individual institutions, but together with a baobab effect, we will help Africa to feed itself. And it will be worth all the efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, President. I think when I listen to what you're saying, we are quite very much impressed with what, um, how much uh, in, you, know, you have done as part of uh, the, the Feed Africa strategy since uh, the last uh, Dakar One Summit. And I think one thing that uh, struck me is what you said about the importance of partnership. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of your, your, label, your neighbor on the left is one of those partners. I understand that in uh, 2017, uh, Badea renewed its partnership with the African Development Bank. Uh, under the, an, arrangement, an arrangement that aims to deliver joint programs worth nearly $1.8 billion. So my question to you, Dr. Sidi Ulta, what lessons can you share uh, with us in delivering impactful and coordinated support to African countries, uh, particularly in the agricultural sector? And how can multilateral partners make financing program more effective and impactful? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, allow me at the outset to uh, really commend uh, the leadership of uh, my brother, Dr. Adeshina. And uh, let me uh, go back to 2015. Just one month after his inauguration as president of the African Development Bank, he sent me a letter inviting me for the Carwan. Mm -hmm. That shows that his commitment to partnership. And since then, we have been working together. We have been working uh, as two sister institutions. He has been also involving us in all activities launched by the African Development Bank. I remember when he called me telling me about the African Investment Forum, and we have been part of that in Joburg and recently in, in Abidjan. So partnership is key for, for development for two reasons. First, as mentioned by Dr. Adeshina and the, the beautiful example given to him by his mother, one 
partner, one individual, one institution can do nothing alone. But together, we can do much better than the sum of our individual actions. And this is why it's critical, for, particularly in the development arena. And when we are talking about food security, food sovereignty, no, not a single institution can deliver on that agenda. So we need to, to put our hand around the bow above and to, 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 to work together. And I really, I'm really impressed by the, this event, this Dakar 2, uh, for uh, the quality of uh, the participant, the diversity of the participant, but also the level of commitment shown by everybody, starting from head of state and uh, going to, to, to all uh, partners and farmers and uh, sister institutions. So uh, for this to succeed, we need to work together, all the partners, all the technical and financial partners should work with government, with civil society, with farmers, with research centers, because to be able to deliver on this agenda, we need each and every one. Mm. And everyone's contribution mm. should be part of uh, our common action, which will make us able to deliver on Feeding Africa, which is one of the high five launched by uh, Dr. Adishina. So BADEA, the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, is fully committed to this agenda. And we really value our partnership in 2017. I had the, the privilege to receive uh, Dr. Adishina in our HQ, and we signed the MOU. And we have been also delivering on that agenda. In Ethiopia, for instance, we are working on, on this uh, pro uh, agro processing zone. Uh, we are working in, uh, we are now uh, about to start also working in Nigeria, uh, joining uh, African Development Bank and IDB in, 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 in their program. We, we have been working in many uh, projects, even in the infrastructure area, which is uh, key for, to support uh, agricultural development because you have to move food from, from rural areas to, to, to cities and we are working also together on, on many road projects uh, and connecting, uh, connecting countries and uh, one of the, uh, our, 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 our key projects was connecting Tanzania to Mozambique mm -hmm. and, uh, and that is, uh, that's one of uh, the, the, the most successful uh, project we have achieved together but we have been also working in, in uh, various uh, areas. So to, to, to sum up, uh, I do believe that uh, this is a new departure for, for, for Africa, as has been said by the president of uh, Ireland and highlighted by many head of state. This is a new uh, momentum. Uh, it is unprecedented. And uh, we do believe that uh, our common action will really make it happen for Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Doctor. Thank you very much uh, for uh, this very uh, insightful uh, comment. I think one thing that um, certainly I um, take out of uh, your, d your discussion is that not one single entity can really address the challenges that we are facing. As, as uh, Dr. Adesina was saying earlier, these are very, very significant, those challenges that we are facing and that are compounded by the geopolitical tension that we are leading, but also all the type of uh, problem. And I think this um, makes me think about the magnitude of the problem as yesterday was, um, it was said during the discussion that over 250 million uh, people in Africa tend to go to bed hungry. And that's a very difficult issue. And I think that's uh, the, the uh, uh, transition to bring um, our last panelist on, uh, Dr. Serge Ekwe. Uh, Dr. Ekwe uh, Boat, that uh, which you're leading, is a leading partner for YMO countries uh, in the fight against food and nutrition uh, insecurity which is particularly impacted by climate change, as we all know. So COVID-19, of course, and insecurity in the Sahel region. My question to you is, could you tell us um, about the significant actions and um, policies that uh, were deployed by board, as well as the strategic directions that uh, contributed to the attainment of food, uh, of food and uh, uh, nutrition security in West Africa? Bien, merci. Merci pour votre question. Je voudrais, avant de 
d'y répondre très directement, je voudrais euh, tout d'abord euh, remercier le, mon frère, le président Adeshina, mon frère Akin, pour... Euh, ce ne sera pas une surprise pour lui, pour louer une fois de plus son leadership. Je lui disais encore hier soir qu'il rend notre vie un peu plus facile, parce qu'une fois qu'il a fait ses déclarations, une fois qu'il a, qu a inauguré la voie, nous qui arrivons derrière, je vous assure, ça nous rend la vie un peu plus facile. Et ce leadership est incontestable, quel que soit l'endroit où il tient à s'exprimer. Je voudrais également, donc merci pour ça, Akin, je voudrais également remercier et saluer l'engagement le, 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 euh, du docteur Sidi, euh, qui de manière très concrète a toujours soutenu, au même titre que la Banque africaine de développement, toujours soutenu les, les actions de la BOAD, et il les a soutenues de manière très concrète. Vous savez, il y a l'amour et il y a l'épreuve d'amour. Je crois qu'ici, à ma droite, j'ai euh, vraiment le grand privilège, la grande chance, d'avoir euh, non seulement deux amis, deux actionnaires, mais surtout deux grands professionnels qui comprennent parfaitement bien les questions de, de, de solidarité, on en a parlé, mais également les questions d'efficacité pour des secteurs qui sont définitifs, puisque c'est de ça dont nous, nous, pour cela que nous sommes réunis ici, pour un secteur qui, alors aujourd'hui à la faveur de la, de, de la crise que nous connaissons, sont des secteurs qui sont revenus au cœur de l'actualité au cœur de l'actualité, à telle enseigne que je veux bien retenir le terme de « agri-entrepreneur hein, », si je puis m'exprimer ainsi. Alors, pour répondre maintenant directement à votre question, je vais intervenir sur deux points. Le premier point, s'agissant de la Banque Ouest africaine de développement, je vais intervenir sur la question de la méthode, d'abord. Quelle est, quelle est notre méthode Comment est-ce que nous travaillons Et deuxième point, j'interviendrai sur la question des volumes. Alors, la question de la méthode. Elle est intéressante parce que nous sommes une maison de proximité, une maison qui a 50 ans, enfin, qui va fêter ses 50 ans cette année, euh, qui est au cœur, au cœur euh, des sujets de souveraineté, au cœur des sujets publics, du secteur public, et qui se rend de plus en plus vers le secteur privé. Et s'agissant de la façon à laquelle nous travaillons, nous avons d'abord des interventions dites au long cours. Nous finançons de manière très régulière le secteur de l'agriculture qui, de manière générale, et vous le voyez bien, est devenu un secteur fondamental aujourd'hui. Il s'agit, et ça je pense que c'est ce que l'on dit depuis hier, de financer notre production euh, locale de proximité et de favoriser tout ce qui peut permettre les échanges d'une région à une autre, d'un pays à, à un autre. Ça c'est le financement au long cours, on, nous finançons par exemple, nous sommes très investis dans les crédits de campagne. Alors l'intérêt des crédits de campagne, c'est que euh, ce sont alors un, des crédits court terme, mais qui ont une intensité capitalistique très forte. Et chaque sous-jacent a sa vie propre. Le coton n'a pas la vie du soja, qui n'a pas la vie du blé, qui n'a pas la vie euh, de tout autre, autre sous-jacent. Sous Donc on doit s'adapter. Donc cette question de, de, des crédits de campagne prouve bien que euh, euh, le, nous devons avoir la méthode qui s'adapte à la façon avec laquelle euh, nous, euh, nous intervenons. Ça c'est le, le financement au long cours, je dirais. Nous intervenons également euh, de manière contracyclique. Contracyclique. Autrement dit, nous intervenons quand personne n'y va ou quand le marché n'est pas là. Alors, on reviendra sur la question euh, des volumes, notamment euh, euh, lors de la crise de la Covid-19, mais vous voyez bien que notre activité, comme toutes les grandes banques de développement, c'est d'intervenir de manière contracyclique. C'est euh, important parce que euh, euh, le premier critère qui nous, qui nous guide n'est pas celui de la rentabilité, mais celui de l'efficacité et du soutien absolu aux populations. Il y va de la sécurité et de la stabilité de nos États et de nos pays. C'est une des raisons pour lesquelles la BOAD a été créée. Nous intervenons également de manière plus structurelle, euh, notamment sur les questions de structuration de filières. Voyez-vous, ce sont des sujets qui nous passionnent, euh, à l'instar de ce qui a été fait dans des grands pays comme la Côte d'Ivoire, euh, le Nigeria, bien évidemment, depuis un certain nombre d'années. Dans notre zone, il y a encore un certain nombre de pays dont les filières ne sont pas structurées, dont la précarité de, 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 
des agriculteurs est encore forte. Donc l'instabilité financière, matérielle des, des agriculteurs est encore forte, est encore beaucoup trop forte. Il s'agit pour nous de travailler de manière technique et ensuite de manière, en, en injectant des capitaux, de voir comment nous pouvons protéger les récoltes, protéger les agriculteurs, stabiliser bien évidemment les filières et utiliser cette structuration de filières pour renforcer tout ce qui relève de la, de la, comment de, 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 des rentrées fiscales pour les États, augmenter l'assiette fiscale et le taux de pression fiscale. Et la réalité, c'est que les taux de pression fiscale sont beaucoup trop, les taux de pression fiscale, pardon, sont beaucoup trop, euh, sont beaucoup trop faibles dans nos États. Et ceci se fait au détriment de nos populations. Nous travaillons également dans la structuration euh, euh, d'assurance, d'assurance indicielle. Alors, il ne s'agit pas là d'aller euh, euh, compenser euh, un agriculteur dans le cadre d'occurrence d'un euh, désastre, mais simplement de travailler sur un indice, typiquement un indice de pluviométrie, par exemple, et en cas, euh, au cas où cet indice ne serait pas au niveau attendu, on compenserait l'agriculteur parce qu'on considérerait qu'effectivement, même, si même si nous ne sommes pas dans une situation de catastrophe, euh, mais euh, l'agriculteur euh, 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 peut euh, euh, comment je veux dire, subir une baisse de sa production. Donc, j'allais presque dire ça, ce sont les méthodes. Alors, comment maintenant travaillons-nous sur les volumes On part du principe que, euh, vous savez, c'est ce principe anglais qui veut que cash, cash is king. L'argent euh, est roi ou l'argent est reine. C'est-à-dire que nous devons injecter du capital, injecter de la liquidité. Nous avons, vous le savez certainement, beaucoup travaillé sur notre augmentation de, de capital. Parce qu'une fois de plus, à l'instar de ce que la Badea a fait, à l'instar de ce que la Banque africaine de développement a fait il y a quelques années, euh, la question du capital est fondamentale. Nous avons travaillé, notamment pour sur, le, sur la Covid-19, euh, 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 nous avons injecté 500 millions d'euros à des bourgs rapides, à des bourgs rapides auprès euh, euh, des États et du secteur privé afin de soulager immédiatement les populations. Nous lançons un programme de 300 millions d'euros euh, euh, à l'heure actuelle pour tout ce qui concerne les engrais, pour tout ce qui concerne les semences, etc. etc. L'idée, c'est d'avoir une, une, euh, un programme d'intervention rapide à impact. Ceci est, très, ceci est très concret, ça vise à euh, indemniser et, et à protéger ou apporter des solutions immédiates à nos populations d'agriculteurs et de fermiers. De manière plus générale, et je conclurai par là, nous faisons passer au travers de notre plan nos engagements pour le secteur agricole qui est devenu, parce que nous, nous avons basculé vers une approche sectorielle, euh, couvrant à la fois la question euh, de la, la question, comment dirais-je, de la de la euh, de, de, de l'agri business, mais en commençant par celui tout simplement euh, de, la, de la sécurité alimentaire. Alors, l'agribusiness, c'est la partie plus privée euh, montée dans les chaînes de valeur, mais nous commençons d'abord par le sujet de la, de la sécurité alimentaire qui est le premier besoin de l'ensemble de nos populations. Alors, au travers de notre plan, nous faisons euh, progresser nos engagements de 15% de nos encours à 25%. Ce qui nous fait progresser, euh, aujourd'hui, nous, nous, nous visualisons un montant de l'ordre de 2 milliards d'euros de, de dollars, à peu près, sur le euh, quinquennat dédié spécifiquement en volume au sujet d'agriculture. Donc vous voyez bien, du point de vue de la méthode ou du point de vue des volumes, voici aujourd'hui de manière très concrète la façon avec laquelle la BOAD travaille. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Ekwe. I think when we listen to you, we just want this uh, conversation to continue because it's extremely insightful in um, the discussion that we've been having so far. Unfortunately, we are reminded that uh, we have exhausted our time. So I'm going to actually uh, just very much thank our panelists for their very uh, critical insight. If there is one takeaway that we can have from this discussion, is about the importance of partnership. And the good thing is these three head of institutions actually work the talk because they all engage in to actually mutually beneficial partnership and for that they really deserve a round of applause. And uh, thank you very much uh, for what you're doing uh, in helping Africa foot a fit itself. And we look forward to have continuing this type of discussion as part of the next session. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.